Hello world, this is Lai from QNet headquarters in Taipei, Taiwan. Our marketing specialist Michael. Today we are going to talk about our QTS 434 update and it's my pleasure to have our Vice President in Research and Development, Mr. YT Lee with me. Hi YT. Hi everyone, I'm YT, nice to meet you. And today we are going to talk about our upcoming, and actually it's already in beta, right? Yeah. Uh, the QTS 434 release and can we go to the slide please? In a slide, we can see that uh, this time we have a slogan that is concentrate on the core value of storage. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time we try to refocus and concentrate on the essence of a storage device and uh, re, uh, redefine the nature of a NAS. So mm -hmm. in regard to this aspect, do we have any uh, insight and uh, the overview of the, this update that can share with us? Yeah, actually, uh, QNAP already developed a lot of uh, applications uh, on top of uh, QNAP QTS platform in NAS. And uh, during the past years, uh, we also uh, keep on collecting all the feedbacks uh, from uh, end customer side, from the distributor, and also from the uh, foreign's uh, communities. So, uh, in uh, except of the the develop of application, we still continue to. Uh, improving our uh, underlying core systems. Let's also match uh, what I, we are, our target, uh, our focus, uh, concentrate on the core value of storage. So uh, in QTS 434, this time we uh, put more efforts and more uh, features on uh, the storage and the signature feature. So uh, let me show you uh, the brand new features of QTS 434. So uh, the Actually, the improvement, the major improvement is the basic of data storage. Uh, because we are focusing on the core of storage, so the performance and stability are the keys. I will explain you uh, why we think performance and stability are the keys. And also, because we like to have uh, new features uh, on Snapshot, so we can, uh, combine those uh, features uh, uh, into storage and Snapshot manager. So the uh, new brand new storage and strange manager will involve the data uh, safety and also combine uh, up features, especially on the unbased NAS. In the previous uh, versions of QTS, we only provide the uh, snapshot feature for high level, middle or high level x86 based NAS. But now we think uh, it's also very important for unbased and entry level NAS uh, to have the snapshot feature for, for better data protections. And also uh, for the data protection, we released the hybrid backup sync official version in uh, together with QTS 434. So uh, we have a single portal of data backup and recovery to, to back up local data uh, and also take the uh, backup the cloud data and also in uh, from cloud or uh, into cloud. And the, all the uh, operations can also be uh, combined into file station. Uh, we put more file, uh, features in file station to uh, concentrate and integrate all the management and uh, uh, and the uh, use of data, and also uh, connect the mobile phone to see the content in inside mobile phone. So the highly integrated file station will have uh, all the features, including access and the management uh, for, for all the file operations. So uh, YT, well, we all know that uh, some of our users are also using their NAS for home entertainment or multimedia purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, besides all these uh, storage essential improvements and new features, do we have um, anything that are related to multimedia? Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, if, uh, this time, even we uh, mainly focus on the uh, core of storage, but for the home and the multimedia users, uh, we also listen to their feedbacks, especially on the uh, video file playback. Uh, we know uh, in uh, previous versions of QTS 434, uh, before 434, uh, the unbased NAS uh, does not have uh, the capability for the transcoding and also uh, the video playback features in the unbased NAS. But now we uh, have the streaming uh, methodology to cover with the VLC player on your laptop or on your mobile device. 
So by leveraging the decoding capability of VLC, uh, it's very powerful decoding capability. So uh, customer or users can they can uh, streaming all the uh, contents from the the NAS itself uh, by using fire station by using video station then uh, streaming to the laptop and the desktop uh, decode by VLC so uh, have a very rich 4K to K or even 360 degree uh, video files. That's very impressive. And uh, and why did we know that uh, previously the ARM based NAS are known as a small resource limited? They do not have like, such powerful capability like the X86 uh, models. Yeah. And uh, how and we are adding so many new features to the ARM based NAS. So uh, is there any resource management mechanism that can help us help us? keep our ARM-based NAS at its optimal condition? Yeah, yes. Uh, because we uh, provide so many uh, comprehensive features on our NAS and uh, even on the entry-level ARM-based NAS. So we really need to have uh, a very good resource management and uh, computing power management. So that's why we introduced a QBoost uh, feature in uh, QTS 434 this time. Uh, by leveraging the QBoost uh, feature, we can optimize uh, the memory usage uh, and uh, also a resource usage inside NAS to uh, reserve or preserve the space for for the unbased NAS uh, to run uh, more applications, even equipped with the snapshot features. So, uh, YT, you just mentioned that uh, this time we focus on the core value of a storage device, yeah. that is um, performance and stability. Yeah, and so. In your opinion, what what kind of uh, effects that uh, these two factors have on our storage? And uh, do you have any perspective that you can share with us? Yes, just let me show you. Uh, because we uh, back to the basic of store, uh, data storage, performance and stability are the keys. Why? Uh, let's go back to see uh, around two years ago, uh, we also study uh, from the open source community about uh, BTRFS, uh, butter uh, file system. Then we uh, think about if we can leverage it at that time. So we did a lot of uh, evaluations and the test and uh, try to uh, catch up the foundation of storage, the performance of that stability, because as a NAS, the performance cannot uh, be compromised. So uh, all the assets uh, for multiple users need to be guaranteed. Uh, the, with a uh, certain uh, latency or uh, performance. And also, uh, we, during our uh, evaluation, we found uh, AXT4, what uh, the uh, file system we are using is more mature and uh, more stable. Uh, why we say that? Because after our analysis, uh, the BTRFS file system has uh, two major drawbacks there. The first drawback is the performance. The performance, uh, even we uh, use a high-end uh, storage devices, uh, we also still get the degraded performance. Uh, around two years ago, the hard drive uh, throughput only uh, about 100 to 120 megabyte per second. But now the high uh, capacity uh, NAS drive, uh, 60 terabyte, 8 terabyte, 10 terabyte already has 150 megabyte to 200 megabyte uh, per, uh, per second performance. That means uh, the original uh, performance, which can uh, be satisfied by BTRFS at the time, cannot fulfill uh, on the most uh, major hard drives in the market at this moment. And even uh, like this, we cannot uh, fulfill the, the performance requirement of SSD. Uh, the SSD device usually have the throughput uh, more than uh, 400 megabyte per second, uh, even high, uh, higher than 100, uh, 1000 megabyte per second on the NVMe devices. And the second drawback of uh, BTRFS file system is the manageability because uh, BTR files, uh, BTRFS file system mix all the uh, storage and data and the uh, Snapshot and also uh, the iSCSI lungs together in single space. That means all the uh, data will be 
uh, we will share the same space. Then uh, every partition of data uh, increase, then it will also uh, compress all the availability space of other uh, other uh, type of usage. So uh, I think this is just our uh, internal an analysis, but we also get a similar uh, result from uh, the community. Just you can see uh, by using uh, our low end NAS TS four three one P two is just one gigabyte memory with ext four file system, and uh, with Synology DS thirty eighty XS, this is a uh, very powerful Intel Xeon D processor uh, fifteen zero uh, A. Uh, Xeon D processor with 8 gigabyte memory and the VTIFS. We uh, have uh, 1,000 of uh, photos, photo files uh, to be copied from uh, laptop to the to the uh, NAS. And the, uh, the community uh, test result shows uh, for TS three uh, four three one P two only take uh, one eighty eight seconds. Uh, to complete to finish one hundred uh, one thousand uh, files, but uh, for Synology DS thirty eight thirty eighteen XS, it uh, spent more than two uh, two hundred and twenty six seconds. So more than uh, eighteen uh, plus uh, eighteen percent uh, performance gain uh, on uh, even the low end uh, TS four three one ARM based NAS. So this shows the difference on uh, XT4 and the uh, BTRFS. Uh, this is uh, you, you can also check in the reference uh, on the source. It's a NAS PK word on YouTube uh, as a, as the the link there. And also on the manageability, uh, QTS uh, we have our in-house developed uh, XT4 based Snesha, uh store the all the Snesha data outside the button. And also uh, separate the ice gas down uh, with the normal data. But by using our Snesha technology, all this can be uh, protected by Snesha, global Snesha. But for Synology DSM, uh, it leverages the open source BTRF Snesha and store uh, the Snesha inside the volume. So uh, just for uh, in this uh, test evaluation from from community, we can see in the left side is uh, based on Q, uh, based on QNAP QTS and uh, also uh, equipped with uh, TVS four three uh, four seventy three. This is a uh, uh, middle level of uh, NAS, and it can finish the copy. The copy happened. Uh, we the test happened on the 10, uh, 10 gigabyte data copy. And uh, after copy text Nesha, then delete, then copy again, then uh, it failed on Synology machine. So as the right hand side, uh, the reason why is uh, QTS Nesha, uh, the space usage uh, will not be in, uh, interfered by the Nesha. So uh, even uh, we did a lot of operation on the Nesha, then uh, it can still uh, preserve the. Uh, uh, certain space for the data uh, operations, but for uh, DSM sensors, the sensor space usage cannot be controlled. So uh, when copy uh, uh, ten gigabyte of data in, then uh, delete the sensor still there and occupy space. So uh, no more space to copy uh, another time of uh, ten gigabyte mem uh, files. So this is ca can also be. Uh, be uh, retrieved from Na uh, NAS PK World on YouTube. So this is uh, what we also see the evidence from outside. That means uh, the ext4 file system even is a uh, more uh, more legacy one, but it's stable and uh, com combined with uh, QNAP developed in-house developed snapshot mechanism, it performed very well on both performance and on both uh, and also on uh, stability. Uh, at least, uh, at least the test results are produced by a local community, right? Yeah, right? and we are glad to see our product are very popular among those, those communities. Yeah, exactly. And what he uh, as in uh, our, as our vice president in research and development in this um, 
development stage of the QTS 434. Uh, it, it, do you have any special experience or words of thoughts that you, you would like to share with us? Yeah, uh, because we uh, spend a lot of time to uh, develop snapshot and also try to uh, make it happen on, on best NAS. So we also uh, spend a lot of time to uh, fine tune the user interface of uh, storage and Snapshot manager to make sure uh, even the home user, they can leverage the Snapshot feature easily uh, without knowing uh, very, very uh, difficult uh, terminologies or uh, operations. So we have a, a very good re and a redesign of the, the storage and Snapshot manager inside QTS. I will also that uh, our a senior product manager Tony to introduce and to show you the detail of a uh, snapshot a uh, storage and snapshot manager inside uh, QTS 434. All right, thank you YT for giving us such an impressive uh, opening speech about the concept of this update. Thank you YT. Thank you. And we are have to pause here to let uh, our senior product manager Tony to come in and do a little bit setup on our computer and uh, like demo equipment. So please stay with us just for a few moments. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Now I have our senior product manager Tony with me. Hi, Tony. Hello, everyone. I'm Tony. And uh, Tony is going to introduce us about all these improvement and new features in our storage and snapshot related features. So let's get started, Tony. Yes. Okay, um, we are very exciting the new QTS. Especially we improve a lot of storage and snapshot feature. But why we do so uh, much improvement of the snapshot? Because uh, we are aware the ransomware is getting serious than before. Um, to protect uh, our data from ransom, uh, ransomware, uh, we must improve our snapshot technology. But as I mentioned before, uh, we have many unbased NAS. Uh, those NAS uh, doesn't support snapshot feature. Yeah, previously, right? Yes. Uh, in uh, so in uh, new QTS, uh, now we can support uh, unbased NAS uh, to uh, support uh, more data protection for uh, our customers. For unbased NAS, now we support like TSX uh, 31X, uh, 31P or P2, uh, a lot new model. Um, for snapshot number, uh, it depends on RAM size from one gigabyte to uh, more memory. Uh, the point is uh, why we um, do many uh, modification to support one gigabyte RAM uh, for very low end ARM based NAS and because uh, we already chip a lot uh, NAS consumer NAS to our customer. They also uh, facing the ransomware problem. So we want to improve our technology to help our customer get better data protection. That's very good because um, those home users, they may not have um, a comprehensive um, IT knowledge and they are very easy to be attacked and become victim of ransomware. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, for ARM based NAS, many customers use this kind of NAS as snapshot backup target or backup storage. So why we put this slide here? Because some our user ask us, can we support not restore the files uh, from remote NAS directly? In current design, we uh, user has uh, has to clone clone the snapshot and become a shield folder to access the file. But in new QTS in this version, uh, you don't need to do this operation. You just open file station and you can see the snapshot. It's just like a shared folder, right? You don't need to yes, restore yes, anything yes. and you can access the yes. snapshots just like a shared folder. Yes, you can choose a different time point. You can find the file you want to 
uh, restore and you can copy or restore to other place. Uh, okay, uh, so let's uh, explain why snapshot is so important. Um, for ransomware, it's kind of uh, malware. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of software, uh, malware, uh, lock your files and ask you to pay to get your files yeah, back. Yeah, that's a very annoying. Yeah, so uh, many people install backup software to backup the file. However, if you just back up the locked files to the NAS, to a NAS, doesn't mean that you still lost your files. Yeah, all your, all your files are still, still locked. Yeah, so we still need a snapshot to get many version or many time uh, of the files. So that's how we can get the uh, original files back from our storage. So it's a very important technology. So you keep different versions so you can restore from a certain time sure, point. Sure. Uh, in QNAP NAS, we support two kinds of snapshot. One for volume, one for block based long. That's mean uh, we can support uh, like a shell folder snapshot uh, based on volume, or we can support long snapshot based on block based long. Uh, long. For the snapshot space usage, we suppose uh, uh, outside of Valen, snapshot. Uh, yeah, those, sna those snapshot are kept outside of the yes, Valen. Yes. For some file system, they support snapshot, but they store snapshot inside of Valen. Yeah. yeah, it's a technology term, so uh, it, it doesn't matter to which one is good or which one is bad. It's a kind of uh, idea of the how to implement snapshot. But we choose outside of button because we think data and snapshot are different. So we want to control and we want to allow user can control the space, not just based on how system uses it. So it's easier to manage all those spaces yes. based on different purposes. Yeah, yeah. And you don't mix all the data together. Yes. However, in current design, if user create a volume with seek type, that means the occupy a lot of space already. Mm -hmm. So the snapshot space um, becomes very uh, small and yeah, very small. Yeah. So uh, for our customer, they tell us they want they know their data maybe just one terabyte, not a three terabyte, a three terabyte. But what they want is more snapshot protection. So in this version, we support a very cool feature called sync button convert to sync button. That's what mean you want you click the convert button, then your Sick button becomes sync button and you free more space for snapshot. But that means you need to uh, monitor and watch yes, your yes. sync sync button usage, right? Yes. To simplify the monitoring operation, we support two features in this QTS. The first one is minima guarantee snapshot space design. That means a uh, uh, user can uh, configure the snapshot space they need or customize the space for their snapshot uh, backup. So it's uh, very convenient because you know how how much the space you use. Yeah, it's for easy to control. Yes. Second, the dashboard of snapshot. So in this page, you can see the data usage and also snapshot usage. So you understand how much unused space. So you can decide for the space you can use for your data or you can use for your snapshot. You can choose. So you don't need to guess uh, what should I do. So it's very convenient. Yeah, it's easier to understand with a clear graphic user interface. 
and you can easily see what's going on and uh, how much space you have and uh, when's the last snapshot. Yes, so it's yes. more easily to manage all these features without very uh, comprehensive knowledge about it. You can easily see everything here. Yes, and that's our purpose. Very good. So when we, when we create a lot of snapshot to manage or to find files become difficult. So uh, in a new QTS, new QTS, we also suppose uh, browse the snapshot in file station, not only for big snapshot backup, but also the snapshot itself. And if we want to uh, pick up snapshot uh, to a remote site, uh, we support three function, uh, three functions. The first one is snapshot replica. That means uh, we can configure pick up uh, snapshot pick up job and pick up the snapshot to remote NAS. In this case, it's our ARM based NAS, so it's a uh, it's a new 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 kinds of product. Yes, of course. Yeah. And Snapshot Vault is used uh, for storing multiple uh, Snapshot, uh, multiple NAS Snapshot. And Backup Snapshot Vault means you, uh, we can backup Snapshot Vault to other places. So it's, it's like uh, you, you need to have backup for backups, right? Uh, yes. So you need multiple backup, maybe in multiple locations, local and remote. Yes. So yes. you can keep your data safe. Yes. For Snapshot Backup Plan, we also improve a lot. Now uh, we can create multiple scheduler for uh, backup plan. Uh, we can have uh, different kinds of Snapshot replication uh, way so that uh, you can uh, pick up the Snapshot, not all, but uh, uh, certain specific uh, condition. Uh, later I will show a live demo. Oh, of course. So for end user, uh, we can allow uh, common user to access the screenshot uh, to Windows previous version. And uh, for make our Linux user, they, they can use uh, SMB, CIFS, CIFS, FP, or NFS protocol to access the shared folder uh, and the screenshot folder. If I want to uh, look for some files that are in snapshots, I can very easily do it by myself. Yeah, and, I, uh, and, and don't I don't need help from IT guys. Yes, many ways. Yeah. For VMware or uh, Microsoft, like uh, Hyper-V or uh, Microsoft BSS, uh, we can uh, leverage. Uh, we can install snapshot agents to uh, help. Uh, data uh, application consistent snapshots to keep the data consistent. So we have um, a very complete solution in every way to keep the data safe. Yeah. And the user doesn't have to worry about um, if they don't understand all these uh, comprehensive technologies because we try to make as easy as possible. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, let's uh, have a yep. live demo. Sure, of course. Seeing is bleeding, huh? Huh. <laughs> okay, uh, this is our uh, QNAP uh, TS1635. Uh, 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 it's, uh, you can see the CPU is Anapuna Lab, uh, ALO uh, 514. It's, uh, it includes uh, uh, 8 gigabyte memory. Uh, so, the new storage and snapshot manager for ARM based NAS almost the same to uh, uh, Intel and the uh, NAS. So uh, we can see we have a snapshot dashboard here so that uh, we can uh, quickly understand how many data already allocated and uh, how many snapshot we can use. So it's uh, just a uh, just, uh, quicker, quickly overview. Yep. And we can click this button to see the space utilization history. That's very good. Yeah. A very clear overview of everything, even in a, a period of time. Yeah, sure.
here we already uh, create uh, several snapshots here. So we can click this button. Uh, here is uh, our snapshot manager. We can see the different type, different type point. We can see different snapshot point here. But for some user to access the file is still a little bit, you know, um, it's yeah. kind of um, complicated. Yeah, complicated. Not that easy. Yeah. I would say. So here a new icon called Open in Fire Station. See, it's much easier, yeah. <laughs> right? You just directly connect to the fire station. Yeah. Then you just browse in the fire station like a normal folder. Yeah. So it's a very uh, exciting feature yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. Because it makes things a lot of easier. And uh, previously, these are all in only in high-end level, high-end model, yeah. right? And uh, this might be a little bit complicated for mm -hmm. end users. Yes. But now we try to make it as simple as possible, mm -hmm. providing more data protection to yes. our users. Yes. Yes. Okay. So for a uh, snapshot backup, here we have a snapshot replica page. Here we can see the uh, storage, uh, storage pool status and the snapshot status. Here is snapshot vote. That means we already already get some snapshot backup from a remote NAS. Here is the, our source NAS. It's a, a 1282T NAS we already tripped to, uh, to market. So um, we create a snapshot backup plan here. We already create one. We can see the new backup plan here. Okay, there are three different modes and each mode you can create different schedule and you can create multiple schedule or even you can choose every five minutes. Okay, we, we also can do every five minutes, right? Yes. Okay, so I uh, we already uh, sent some snapshot backup to, the, to our arm NAS here. The same, uh, this is a current design. We can see the files uh, by Snapshot Vault Manager, but it's still not uh, uh, convenient enough. So here we see again. again this icon. But this time, we can directly open File Station and see the Snapshot Vault item here. We can click here and see all the Snapshot. So we don't need to find the UI, where's the UI, we just find, we just open file station, that's mm. all. Yeah, it's if it's configured, all, can, all of these operations can be done on one NAS. Right? Yes. So this time, if you want to get one, get uh, certain file files from your big ARM NAS, special ARM NAS, you just connect to the NAS, find your file station, you get your file. Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> very easy for centrally managing uh, multiple analysis and the uh, multiple backup plans. Yes. Okay, uh, let's back to our slides. So now we talk about all this um, data protection through snapshots. And uh, <clears throat> performance are also a very important factor regarding to the um, basics of a storage device. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Especially SSD drivers. Uh, although SSD drive uh, are expensive, but the advantage of SSD drive is also significant. So how to uh, maximize the utilization of SSD drive is a very important task, not only for our user, but also for QNAP company. Yes, of course. Uh, to improve the utilization of SSD drive, we already support a QNAP auto tiering, tier, uh, sorry, auto tiering technology called QTier. Uh, I explained QTier briefly. QTier means uh, we can 
uh, that system to check the fire's frequency and move uh, the data from uh, high-speed SAT space to uh, high-capacity space, uh, means a uh, hard drive space. It uh, depends on the frequency of how to access the, the, the data. So you mean um, if a layer is a file, maybe a database file that I use it every day, yes. it will be moved into a faster drive yes. than, say, SSD yeah, drive. Yeah, SSD drive. But if I have a very, a very large, say, maybe 2 gigabytes or 3 gigabytes of video file that I took in, in a trip to a countryside, yes. then, the, then I don't really want to look uh, watch that video every day, so it mm -hmm. will be sent to the larger capacity mm -hmm. drive, but maybe with a slower speed. Yes, right? yes. Uh, according to our understand, uh, our survey, we already know um, at least uh, thousand hundred or not already use QT, so it's a very mature. However, people still ask, what's different to SD catch? And QT. Uh, that's a um, different technology, but uh, since it's all from QNAP, we yes, will yes, try yes, to yes. compare it. Yes. Uh, SAT cache and auto tiering are different. Uh, uh, you can see the diagram here. SAT cache is used to store, uh, SS, uh, store the files temporarily uh, outside the storage space. But QTR means SAD space is part of storage space. So you store fire to your space, but maybe in SAD or maybe in hard drive. So then you can see because the architecture is different, so the operation is different too. In QTS, uh, sorry, in QTR 2.0, uh, we improve uh, a lot, especially for IO awareness. Uh, why is IO awareness? Mm, uh, see this uh, diagram, especially the D block. Uh, we found some uh, interesting uh, customers' feedback is, uh, for example, some backup software. They will use database, uh, we call metadata, to improve their backup performance. Uh, you can image uh, you can image that the metadata stored in DBRAC. But for QT uh, 1.0, uh, the files, uh, the, the DB part, DB part uh, will be moved to SAD space, maybe one hour or maybe after one day. So it's a little bit too slow. But in QT 2.0, the system can detect the block is sequential assets or random assets. When the system detect the, for example, D block is a random assets, the system will move the D block to SSD space to improve the random assets performance. So actually, it will know the data is being re uh, requested now, so it will be moved to a faster yes. drive. Yes. So uh, we can uh, now we can uh, recognize the. Data access pattern. Sorry, the uh, the taken technical term. Yeah. Besides, uh, we get some feedback from our, our user. They say the SAD capacity, uh, uh, a special QT uh, run out of SAD capacity very quickly, because almost everything. Uh, AB files will store to SSD space first. So that's, uh, you know. Yeah, the SSD are expensive. And uh, if it's quickly filled with all the files, then it will do uh, not, yeah. not much help. Yeah, it's a, it's a problem. So uh, after we study uh, why we uh, why customer has such issue, we found because um, in, our, in, in general NAS, not all share folder store important files. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, in QT 2.0, the new design called the tiering on demand. That means user can enable or disable auto tiering function based on share folder. So you can just uh, enable auto tiering on the important share folder. Yeah. 
For example, if I, if I have a share folder that stores um, my work files, I can enable SSD cache on that. Yes. I'm not, sorry, not SSD cache. Q it's okay, yeah. Q-tier 2.0. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And for some uh, folder that I store my photos that I, that I take on my trip, then that part doesn't need to be accelerated, right? Yes, yes. That can be kept on the traditional yeah. hard drives. Mm -hmm. So that means um, in in addition to those automatic patterns that decide where data where, where the data goes, we can manually control what for, what what kind of data should go to the yes. hard drives. Yes. So, uh, in the end, the benefit is we save a lot SAD space, but we still get the same performance. Yeah. So we maximize uh, the performance and the um, it's. Um, utilization yes. of an SSD drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So, uh, for previous uh, QTS 4.2, uh, we don't support, uh, if a customer uh, uh, doesn't enable QTS function, uh, in new QTS, uh, is, uh, we support directory upgrade uh, common storage pool to QTS pool, as long as you can install SSD driver. So um, you don't have to copy all the data out yes. and the format and uh, do it all again and copy it back. Yeah. So you can directly convert them to a, a Q tier pool. Yeah. Uh, some users say, um, but uh, we don't have any space to install more SSD, but we have SSD cache. So can we convert SSD cache to Q tier? Uh, uh, our answer, uh, our, our answer is uh, yes, but you have to disable your S your SSD cache. Yeah, the, the, you still have to disable it first, yeah. but uh, you don't have to buy another drive. Yes, just temporarily disable and do the conversion. Yes, that will be done. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is our uh internal lab test. Uh, we have a uh, twelve SSD with uh in rate ten. 12 hard drive in RAID 6, you can find. We also adapt um, Menalo's 40 gig ISER adapter. So we can get uh, uh, over 180,000 uh, IAPs and we get less than one millisecond response time. It's very impressive. It's almost like an all flash drive, all flash array, right? Yes, yes. So, uh, for QNAP uh, tier, uh, auto tiering technology, we so far we uh, find uh, we find uh, sorry we find uh, some application is especially suitable for Q, uh, auto tiering technology. The first one is file server, especially you know some some files very popular. Maybe database files. Yes, yeah, yeah, database yes. servers. Yeah, and like a web server. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah <know>. access those <laughs> web pages frequently. Yeah, and mail server. Yeah, a lot of mails coming in, come going out. Yeah, that makes and sense. some virtual desktop application. Um, that's resource intensive, so you want mm -hmm. um, better performance, yeah. faster speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see lab demo. Oh, of course. Okay, uh, we we have uh, we have a Qt enable storage pool here already. Uh, you can see we have two SSD as Ray One and two hard drive uh, in Ray One and combine together uh, as a uh, one storage pool. In Qt auto tiering page, we can see all the configuration and the uh, layer. In this, in here, we all uh, we already have half of space used uh, uh, for SAD capacity. I'm oh, sorry here. Uh, we just mentioned we can uh, configure more precisely of the share folder. Yeah, for share folders to enable or disable yes. Qt. So we can click the button. Then. We can see all share folder. 
just click here, enable, that's all. Yeah, that's very easy. Yeah. Even better, you don't need to enable auto tiering here. On Fire Station, if we think web, uh, web share folder is a uh, uh, little bit too slow, we want to uh, lay, uh, let this share folder uh, in enable auto tiering. We just click mouse here and enable auto tiering. That's all. That's very easy. So, um, uh, a lot of operations are already uh, combined and integrated into the file station and you know, for the snapshots and the QT -er, they all can be done in a single yeah. web interface yes okay um, let's back to our slides thanks so we talk about data safety and we talk about speed and there's some uh, actually there's some local news in Taiwan, a very famous um, website that their, their famous forum in Taiwan, their data rate mm -hmm. are broken. Yes. And the, a lot of people are suffering because they cannot live without that website. Not recovered it, yet? Uh, uh, I don't know. I haven't checked the news today, but uh, I, I heard it's done yesterday. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, um, if we have more disks, actually, uh, how to manage in this disk mm -hmm. is a is a pen, right? Yeah, sure. And more disk doesn't guarantee your data safety. Yeah, is that course. correct? Yeah, yeah, yes. And not only the number of disk, but also the capacity of the disk. If we use, uh, for example, uh, a large disk in this case twelve, with capacity like eight terabyte, according to the calculator, the risk is. 9.5 percent it's a very high risk it's very risky yeah it's it it usually we think a more disk is safer is better but actually it's not right yeah it, it depends on a lot of factors and this is um very um, shocking numbers actually yeah. so the best the best uh rate of protection is rate 10 so in this case, you can see the risk uh, risk is 0.2%. But in new QTS, we suppose rate 50, uh, 50, 0 and 6, uh, sorry, 5, 0 and 6, 0. Uh, the same after the calculation, we can get like a 0.6%. Uh, uh, that improves a lot, actually. And uh, not still not good not compared to ray one zero it, it, it's not yet but uh with um, only ray five it's um a lot of better and you get more capacity yeah more space yeah and that's good it's a balance between a space and those uh, chance of failure mm -hmm. yes it's final balance and uh ray five five zero and six zero are pretty good yeah not, not why we support ray uh five zero and six zero this time even better if um uh, the application our uh, user uh, has the data access like a random write the rate 50 and 60 can increase the performance well, that's a matter of side benefits of them yeah. you want more data safety and the security and uh, you or you're getting also getting additional benefit of performance increase yeah uh, that's a, that's a why uh, because uh, we separate the hard drive into different red group. Uh, when the data write to the storage space, uh, each red group can uh, perform their uh, parity calculation separately. Uh, for hard drive, the performance improve may be not so uh, obvious. obvious. Yeah, but for SSD, the performance improve improvement can reach three times. That's very impressive. So you you distribute all these uh, calculation loads to different subgroups, so that the data won't be packed in a single place. Yeah, yeah. you just distribute them, and uh, you get a side benefit of performance yeah. improvement. Yes. So, uh, here's a complete QNAPA rate type table. Uh, you can uh, you can you uh, you can see. Ray five, ray six, ray uh one zero, uh, ray five zero, and ray six zero. Uh, but 
if uh, you want to enable RAID 50, you must uh, use at least six hard drives. Uh, for six, uh, six, uh, sorry, six zero, you must at least you must have at least eight hard drives. It's like uh, you have uh, in five zero. It's like you have two Ray five group uh, mirroring each other, yes. right? So if uh, for Ray five, it's at least three. And for five zero, you have at least six. Yes. And the same apply to Ray six zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, when um when we talk about uh, uh especially SSD uh improve uh, performance improvement uh by ray uh fifty uh sorry five zero or six zero uh almost everyone will ask me how about QT? Can QT uh, use this technology? Yeah, you put something uh, into a. Uh into the solution and uh, we already using SSD so why not bringing the two yes. together yeah the answer is yes so in this case there are uh, many uh, different kinds of uh, uh, policy that the user can choose for example we can just use a ray uh, uh, 50 zero to have a high capacity and also enable SSD cache to improve some re performance and we can also enable Q tier by SSD in this case RAID 50 uh, uh, sorry 50 and hard drive RAID for uh, 60 so you can get a very big capacity and high speed storage that we, we offer a lot of uh, configuration options for user to choose from yes. but actually it will um, de be determined by how the users want to use the storage pool maybe for um, t latency critical applications say database you want faster speeds and but uh, you still need to store a lot of data so it's all, all be, uh, decide, be decided between us how, how much speed and performance you want and how much storage space you want yes it's striking a balance between all these factors yes do you want to see one why not? Let's go ahead. Okay. Here we have SSD for 60 red group and with the JBAR we have a hard drive red group it's a RAID uh, 50 and all together with the QT technology and they're all combined together yeah so what's the capacity of this storage pool okay uh, it's an 8 terabyte because uh, we just use a uh, small driver so yeah, that's that's okay but uh, I imagine that the performance will be very impressive right yeah. yes because um, because you have less faster drive and you also have those compa big capacity drives you can re replace with bigger SSD if you want right yes. because we for demo purposes we don't use uh, especially big drives yes So we can see uh, a large drive here. So we can use all of that, not just for, you know, just for cache, it's not your storage space. Actually, um, seeing this screen, uh, we have some um, expansion enclosure, right? And yes. Connected to this, and that's something we're going to talk about later in the later slides. Yes. How to um, expand our storage capacity because um, we it, you cannot have um, unlimited drive base in a single NAS. Yes. So it's very important when we need more space. How are we going to expand them? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's back to slides. Uh, because this time we are uh, talking about ARM based NAS. Um, for uh, ARM based NAS, um, so far we don't support. Uh, ARM based NAS as a VJ bar source, but uh, we can use ARM based NAS as VJ bar storage. 
Yeah. It can be used as a target, right? Yeah, used as a target. Uh, before I introduce uh, uh, why is uh, virtual Zepa, uh, I want to explain uh, QNAP's uh, IceGas technology. We support two modes, IceGas initiator and IceGas target. We support uh, such features a uh, very uh, long time already. Uh, we support IceGas initiator because uh, we want to uh, support our customer uh, use QNAP NAS and also get some extra space from some uh, storage or some product that they don't want to uh, use or no need anymore. So we use IceGas Initiator to connect to other uh, product and get the space and use QNAP NAS to format the space and use as uh, internal uh, space. So um, a lot of servers maybe they have um, uh, unused spare space. You can they can be they they can create a scas uh, I long on those servers and uh, uh, QNAP NAS will connect to this through the iSCSI protocol. Yes, yes. And they will they will all become the storage space of the NAS, right? Yes. Uh, in QNAP NAS the uh, I scasi uh, long. Uh, we support two modes. Uh, the first one is block base. Block base means uh, we uh, we allocate a space from storage pool and dedicate for the ice cache LAN. Uh, file base means uh, uh, we use the volume capacity and create create an image and use the image as uh, ice cache LAN. So the file base is created on a volume. But uh, block base is created on the unused space in the storage pool. Yes. Uh, well, we support two kinds of uh, uh, IceGash LAN mode because, uh, of, of course, uh, block based LAN is uh, more uh, faster. And uh, you know, uh, in this case, we mean clear, uh, especially for some, uh, some different. IO operation, maybe someone access the a shell folder, uh, maybe someone use VMware to access ISCAS LAN. So the um, so they will have interference between uh, those all those um, access, right? Yeah. So they, because uh, on a volume there might be shell folders and you have another lung. So they and maybe someone is accessing a file folder and uh, someone is accessing a lung. So all things are mixed together. Yeah. And uh, they may they that might cause some performance impact. Yes. So we support VJ bar is because uh, for some our user the IceGash initiator is still too difficult to understand. Mm, that's true. Because if you don't have lost image, if you're not, you are not an IT professional, that uh, this concept may still be a little bit complicated. Yeah. So the VJ bar, virtual VJ bar idea, uh, the concept is if you use QNAP NAS, you don't need to worry about a complicated configuration of iSCSI initiator. You just click, scan, connect, you get the space from uh, another QNAP NAS. That's all. Similar to Zeba you used. Yeah, it's the same concept, but we are using a different connection yes. type. And if you are all using QNET products, we try to make this uh, setup procedures as simple as possible. Yes. Yeah. Now that's uh, our point. Okay. So uh, with uh, Zeba and VZBA, we can uh, uh, help customer to get uh, uh, very high low capacity from uh, a lot uh, from many NAS storage, especially for some you know some backup purpose, it's very useful. And uh, because um, we, although we can uh, expand those space with our expansion enclosure, but uh, the physical ports are limited, right? Yes. So uh, we try to um, create more possibilities by using the network interface yes. to expand those capacity. Yeah. So it's no longer limited by those physical ports. Yes. And you can create a bigger storage mm -hmm. pool. Yeah. 
Right, that's good. So <clears throat> all these features we talk about data safety and uh, speed improvements, this these are all the core values we emphasize in this release, right? Yes. That's true. very good. So why don't we take a small break here and we will continue to talk about our another solution. So because we need to do a little bit setup and uh, maybe take a sip of water, right? Yeah. So we take a little break from here, maybe two minutes. So stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. It's still Tony with me right now. And uh, we're going to talk about a different subject, actually. We talk about a lot of um, data protection and um, speed improvement. And there's um, also another important aspect we haven't discussed about. It's um, backup. Actually, um, snapshot is a way to help you backup files, sort of backup, backup files. But mm -hmm. actually, we have more ways to keep our data safe. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So let's go to our slides. Okay, uh, uh, in this session, I will uh, introduce uh, how we uh, sync this app uh, for our audience. Uh, the first question is, many people um, ask uh, us why we call it hybrid backup sync. Because usually, backup software or sync software are different. Yeah, yeah that, uh, for different purposes. So some um, some will be separated, or even in a sense of where it will be different functions. Yes, but uh, for data protection perspective, they are almost the same. That's so true. if if uh, if we want to bake a file, or if we want to sync a file between different location, we have to choose which one is correct application I have to use. It made people confused. So uh, in the end, we decide we must support a software or application that support backup and synchronization all together. So you you won't have to worry about which which app I should choose because everything is here. Yes. So happy backup sync. We support backup function, restore function, and synchronization function. For backup, we support hybrid uh, backup, and as a hybrid cloud uh, backup um, for our remote backup target. That means that we support cloud storage, uh, local storage such as uh, external drive or an, uh, our JBAR. And also we support remote, uh, remote NAS. Uh, I want to, I want to uh, say uh, one, uh, one our uh, user's example, a user from United States, uh, he tell us uh, why he uh, he used QNAP hybrid backup sync. Uh, he's a, a, a freelancer software user. Uh, he create a lot of work, uh, very important. Uh, he want to keep uh, the data he uh, his work um, properly. But uh, he doesn't know the uh, too much about IT technology, so uh, he find he just need to put his work works to NAS, and he can configure uh, his uh, backup to his uh, external drive, and also he can configure the files backup to Amazon drive, and he. Uh, he does it uh, every day, and he uh, he say it's very important for him because uh, with QNAP NAS, he doesn't need to understand those complicated uh, IT technology. So it's very easy. We support multiple destinations, and we try to make those software um, as easy as possible. And once you set it, you can pretty much forget it, and we will do it for you automatically. Yeah. Um, I, I have to say, uh, when we get that such feedback, that also um, give us more motiv uh, motivation to improve our product because we know there are many, uh, many such as uh, users there, they need help. 
Yeah, but we have a. Uh, if layer is one, that means there must be more. Yes. So with layer feedback, uh, we can uh, just strive to de deliver more quality quality software to help them finish their job, let do their job better, and uh, keep their lives as easy as possible. Yes. yes. For backup, um, um, in recently we are talking about smart backup. There are uh, three topics here we must understand. The first one is multiple version backup. The second one is data reduction. And third is data security. All are very important. So multiple version backup, QNAP hybrid backup sync support two modes. The first one is simple uh, versioning. That's mean you just uh, uh, set a number, for example, 100 versions for your backup job. It's uh, very uh, simple and easy to understand. But this mode has a problem. Uh, in case an image lasts, you configure a backup task uh, by every hour. It's already backup, uh, backup job. So for 100 backup version, that's mean uh, you can get about four days uh, backup data back. Yeah, about that. Yeah. So uh, if we want to get far more, um, uh, how to say, uh, longer. Yeah, more uh, previously, maybe more than four days ago. Yeah, but we don't want to take too much uh, space for the backup. Uh, we can configure smart versioning. Uh, the system will pick up uh, the backup data, uh, maybe by hourly, by daily, weekly, or monthly. So maybe you get less versioning, but you can get longer backup. That's very useful because um, sometimes people will think uh, more, more, more backup is better, but actually by simple versioning, and it doesn't do the job very well. So we can, with smart versioning, we can backup data in a, a longer term, but with less versions. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next one, we talk about 10 gigabit Ethernet backup. Uh, many, uh, especially, uh, we heard a lot from Fallen. Some uh, users say, why QNAP? Emphasize on 10 gig solution. It's too expensive and not easy to get. You have to buy very expensive switch. But it's getting on less expensive through time, right? Yes. Now it's less expensive. How many people can use 10 gig? But yeah, but uh, still, even get cheaper now, but it's still way more than the previous 1 gig solution. Yeah. but. For QNAP, what we think is for our uh, for our customer, especially for uh, enterprise people, the faster uh, the data, um, sorry, the backup get faster is very important. Especially, uh, we know uh, more and more we call unstructured data uh, created by all the employees, so we get more and more data. For IT people, sorry, for IT manager, they have to handle these files. That means if we don't support higher speed backup, that means the backup window will be longer and longer, and in the one time, you will fail the backup task. Yeah, that's probably true, because say if we want to backup every um, half an hour, but uh, the backup takes maybe maybe forty minutes to complete. Then you will not be doing you will not be doing your next backup because the previous one is not yes. complete yet. Yes. So you if the fail happens right at this moment, you will lose the data. Yes. So the point is, can we use Ambes NAS to support ten G? Uh, I believe we have the product, right? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's I will introduce uh, right now. Okay, let's see the live demo. Okay, uh, here is a, a 
Annapurna Lab L uh, 5 uh, 14 uh, Ambassadors from QNAP and uh, we also install a 10G adapter uh, to the NAS. NAS means uh, this is unbased NAS but with with 10G capabilities. Yeah, can yeah, 10G capability. Uh, usually, I will demo uh, from uh, uh, sorry uh, from uh, Intel NAS 10G backup to a uh, unbased NAS, right? But usually. this time I want to change. I want to prove even with unbased NAS, you still can get very good performance from arm based NAS. Let's see. So here I already create a backup task from arm based NAS and connect to this one 82T uh, 10G NAS. Okay. Before I start the backup task, I will show you what files I want to back up. Okay, here's a file, it's a 4.2 gigabyte. I change the name. So it's a new files, a new, sorry, new file. Then I start the this backup task let's uh, create resource monitor two hundred eighty four megabytes per second that's fast okay finish very good because um, previously we all think that uh, ARM-based NAS are more resource limited and may not have the, as fast as um, x86 based models but actually um, with our improvements uh, in our development there's no much difference right? yes very good okay let's back to our slides uh, uh, except the uh, 10, uh, 10G uh, performance, the cloud security and data reduction are also important. Uh, in QNAP Heavy Backup Sync, we support a uh, secure, uh, secure connection between uh, NAS and the cloud, and we also support server side encryption. Uh, some users still think uh, it's not enough. You know, I'm a wrong guy, maybe. In, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm, all right. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything. Yeah, okay. right. I didn't say anything. So, uh, with support cross star encryption, that means the, the file can be encrypted before sending to the Amaro, uh, so, sorry, to the cloud. Yeah, that's more safe um, because uh, if you encrypt the, encrypt the files on your own, then you only you know the key to decrypt yeah. all those files. Yeah. So, no matter where, where you are sending a file, you keep the key to yourself so it's always safe because if you don't lose the key the file will be safe yes uh, so for data reduction we support uh, like a data filter data compression and smart file detection that's uh, technology can re uh, help a user to reduce the capacity so uh, we already have a 10 gigabit solution but uh, with all these uh, added features, we actually are well, minimizing all those data and uh, filter unnecessary files. So we are reducing the file for fast transfer and uh, we also offer a faster connection. Yes. So we'll be uh, multiple speeding out effects. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for synchronization, um, uh, synchronization, uh, sorry, synchronization means if I want to uh, copy or move a file to a remote site, but I want to see or use the file immediately, I don't, I don't want to restore. So we can choose sync mode, synchronization mode. In Heavy Backup Sync, we support three kinds of sync modes. The first one is one-way sync, that means just one way to the 
remote uh, remote target. Uh, active sync that means uh, we can actively sync the file from remote site, and also two way sync that's uh, sync between two sites. For cloud sync, we support three kinds of uh, different setting for different purpose. Uh, we support middle mode, copy mode, and move mode. Uh, I want to explain a little bit more about these uh, three three modes. Of course. Uh, if we want to keep two sides, the files are uh, always the same. We use the middle mode. That means we have we put one file here in the cloud side. We also get the same files there. So both sides will have the same files. Yes, but if we remove re, sorry remove files from this side. Uh, remote side also will be the files uh, the files will also be removed so anyway um if something is added the other side is added yes. if something is removed the other side is removed. yes so it's always identical yeah. at both ends yeah for cloud storage our cloud sync is a very important feature because uh, the cloud storage space is limited so you don't want to uh use all the space and uh, unlimited cloud storage like, uh, fewer and fewer right? yes uh, yes uh, don't say that again uh, <laughs> it's really real <laughs> anyway so uh copy more that uh, means uh, i just copy any new files to remote side so we can uh, we, uh if even the source site deleted uh, file has been deleted the remote sites they keep the files so we just copy copy and copy and move that means that we just move and move and move yeah, so all these different modes are combined with some different backup targets and the synchronization modes so a, a users can create a, a comprehensive backup plans to suit their needs and the, according to their different use scenarios yes so here is an overview, and in fact, this is just uh, this is a refer from a real our customer. So it's an actual customer case. Yes. So uh, our customer pick up the PC PC uh, data PC files by like a make uh, make time machine or make a replicator or maybe Q sync to uh, kidnap us and also copy a, uh, copy the files to external driver and a VZ bar. And also use uh, uh, remote backup to a remote site, uh, then backup the files also to the cloud storage. Actually, this is a very complete backup solution because you have local backup, you have remote backup, and another remote backup in the cloud. Yes. So it's um, it's a, your your data needs to be backup, but your backup needs to be backup yes. also to to form a completely protection. So this one, you have local side, you have remote side, you have the cloud side, all combined together. Uh, just in, you can be this all can all be done in a single app. Yeah. So, uh, so that mean the QNAP uh, backup solution. Uh, the major purpose is to help our customer, especially the user who uh, don't have too much IT technology. Uh, they can do almost the same thing that real IT profession professionals can do, and for uh as uh, for professionals, we also support more advanced features for uh such users. It's very good, and all the things we have down here, including uh, snapshots for our models, they are all um, bringing more advanced features to our more, more entry level users. So they don't need to spend a lot of money. They don't need a, a very com complicated or comprehensive knowledge. So they can easily enjoy the techno technological advancement. Yes. So they can uh, live life happily ever after. You don't have to worry about data backup stuff. You don't have to worry about uh, ransomware attacks. So it uh, makes everything simpler, yes. easier. Yes. And more affordable, more less expensive, every good yes. things. Yes. Okay. Uh, if uh, you want to know more about uh, QNAP Hyper Backup Sync, you can go to uh, QNAP website. 
to find our solution page about the Happy Bigger Sync solution. Of course. So thank you, Tony, for bringing us a very complete introduction about every aspect we have done to make the um, data protection and file management and all those great features more easily, more affordable, and more, more people can enjoy our hard work. Yes. So thank you, Tony, for bringing us the introduction. Yeah. No and uh, later we will have another of our product manager to introduce the file station, right? Yes. And uh, all these uh, integrated uh, features into file station, we we uh, we aim to make a better user experience. So I will let I will have to pause here again for a little time, and we will introduce our next uh, speaker to the presentation. So stay with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, now I have our product manager, Linus, with me. Hi, Linus. Hi, Michael. And uh, we are going to continue our topic and uh, to introduce the file management stuff. And uh, we just know that uh, in our file station, a lot of new features are added, right? Yes. So let's go to our slides. OK. So with uh, our file management total solution in QTS 4.34, we want to start with what other problems um, our users have right now. Yeah. So from a um, daily office worker of view, we actually categorize their problem into um, following three directions. One, when they want to manage their files, which they can be split into many devices or cloud services like uh, Dropbox or Amazon, which you can name it. And when you try to manage so many files from so many devices, that could be troublesome. You yeah. don't want to log in and log out, log in and log out. Yeah. And actually, a file and the document management are actually an issue. I know a lot of companies are uh, buying or adopting different kind of solution to help them manage files and also papers, scan and document, and try to get them get together in a place so they can control everything. Indeed, yeah. So that idea, our uh, solutions, main idea is the center of file management. We can totally see that in the following slides. And the second part will be the search. So you can imagine as you're gathering so many files into one place, finally, then the second problem is how are you going to get the files you want? Yeah, that's always a headache. I don't need, I don't need, um, I can imagine as a just home user, that um, say say I want to look for a picture that took two years took two years ago by me. Yes, and that's when I visit the uh, states. And then I'm, it, without proper categories and uh, even with proper tech categories, yes. then I still have to spend some time to look for that. That would be so true. You don't want to just scroll back all day and just find that single one picture. Yeah, so search, and the third one will be the categorize. So at the end of at the end of the day, even if you can search for your files that you want, you still want it to be managed into a way, uh, in an order, which you can get back to it in a, maybe a later time, a future time, and you know this bunch of files is uh, the files that you need because you have done so much work on it, and you certainly want this uh, this bunch of files. Uh, to be put in together. That's still always in I can, I can quickly locate all these files of maybe of the same categories, the same file of the same trip, maybe from the same project. So I won't have to spend a lot of time scrolling over all these folders and data. Yes, that's so true. So our total solutions, um, which consists of uh, mainly four apps. FileStation, our old friend, which will be handling the store and backup jobs for us. And QSearch, I believe may, many QNAP fans are familiar with it, but it's get, getting even more powerful with QDS 4.34. And our total new friend, OCR Converter. So I might need to mention this first, OCR, which stands for Optical Content Recognition, which namely we can convert those content in the image uh, which uh, specifically text. If you have a scanner that OCR might be already familiar to you, yes. but if you are just a normal user, you may not know, know that. Yes. Some type of technology that can convert all this 
text characters、yes. into、uh, editable texts. Yes. So this time you will see OCI Commander aligned with our solution. So this is a、uh, this is an app that can be downloaded in the App Center. Yes. And、uh, some of the company are even selling this this kind of tools. Yes.、Right? For money, of course. <laughs> yeah, and we are releasing this converter for you, and we will have more details in the following slides, of course. And to filing, as we mentioned, the problems that being troublesome for users who want to file their files properly, Q filing is always do that intelligently for them. Yeah,、All、right. Very good. So maybe we can start with FileStation. As we just mentioned, we built it、uh, with the idea of the center of everything. As we say, everything it actually cover cloud storages. So for those,、um, including those you've been pretty familiar with, like Google Drive and Dropbox and the others, and we're totally have eight、um, that can be included into、uh, using single one file station interface. You can manage all these eight kinds of cloud storages at the same time. And the second kind will be remote NAS. So you can use those to be familiar with protocol like FTP, Simba, and WebDAV to access the files that is remote from your local local one. And there are actually two external devices are newly added this time. First one is the DVD and Blu-ray reader, and the second one I believe it will certainly be the hit for everyone because we are now supporting mobile devices, which means your iPhone and Android are available.、Uh, their files can be available right now. You can just plug in and access your files from Cloud Station. So basically,、um, basically this covers、uh, the majority of all kind of devices and the majority of the cloud services that most people use.、Yes. And you can mount, even mount remote NASs. Yes. So basically, you can do all the file operations and manage all your spaces and storages in a single. File station. Yes, in a single interface. So, just give you an idea on the details, like what are the eight cloud storage is on the left side, and from the right side, you can see other brands are providing those more common and、um, Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, or OneDrive, but we are providing even more. And for the external devices, as we said, we are now providing a DVD, Blu-ray reader, and mobile devices, and of course, those SD card and USB are already there. Yeah. And just for the record, because we are we know there have been so many、um, useful platform、um, in the market. So for QNAP users, if you are really interested in to put in some of other cloud services other than these eight, we will urge you to tell us, and we will certainly work on it. Although we can't really like guarantee like right now, but we will be happy to know your feature. Just、uh, your request. Just tell us. Yeah, we're happy to take a suggestion in a, for our products, and we'll try to integrate more services into our products. Yeah, it is an endless run. <laughs> yeah, of course. Now, as we、uh, just talk about the mobile、uh, mounting, I mean, just、uh, mounting your mobile devices onto a NAS, I would like to give you a little idea on how it looks like in the fire station. Oh, of course,、yeah. we love like demos. <laughs> Okay, so again, our cool QTS desktop right now, and I want to urge every QNAP fan: do not blink your eyes because it will be too quick. Okay, it's already there. <laughs> so the idea is very very simple. You just need your device with、uh, a connect connect line and just plug in into your NAS, and it will just show you on the left panel. And as you see, we're just plugging an Oppo phone. Uh, which is an Android base, so you can see the internal internal storage, the DCIM, and all the other apps and the files in it. And、uh, let's say you want to drag a bunch of、um, photos from your Android phone without using Wi-Fi. This will certainly be your choice. You just you just said that you only have to plug in the cable into the NAS and connect to your phone, and that's done. Because、uh, I know some of、uh, for some phones that if you want to access like on your computer, you have to install some drivers、mm -hmm. or specific application provided by the manufacturers,、mm -hmm. things like that. Um, we don't need that things. No, we don't. And I believe iOS fans will be very happy to hear this because iOS devices are also supported. That's very good because um. If you don't use iTunes, that will be a problem. If you want to backup your things, yeah, everyone knows Apple. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Hanley does job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can we just go back to our slides? Maybe. Yep. Yeah, so after we introduce how can we manage all these files from the single interface, as we said, there is a second problem, which is search. Yeah. So we have two search already, and it's co uh, it covers from documents, images, and email search, and with a very intuitive way. So let's start with documents. Okay. So documents, what can be very different uh, between QSearch and other brands search engine is that we don't need you to understand the syntax to search. Yeah, sometimes uh, if you want to search for some very specific information, even on the Google, yes. you have to give it some special instruction like the plus symbol yes. or the minus, minus symbol or and or. Quote. Yeah, and you don't want to memorize this because yeah. you maybe you just need it one once a lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been using Google to search for uh, a couple of years, but I still only know that plus sign and the minus sign. <laughs> yeah. other, other syntax I cannot remember. Yeah, that's the best I can do as well. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, so we have QNAP. So all you want, all you have to do is just open the panel and fill in the condition you want, just following the instructions, and you will be all set. Yeah, the, um, yeah, and that's the idea of searching documents in QSearch. And the images. Images, we have two points here. Again, generally, while we're thinking of search, we still need users to put in text as mm. or keywords, let's say. Let me yeah. That, right? yeah, but that is not that intuitively uh, when you think about searching for photos and images because you took photos, you are not writing anything. Yeah. So all you want uh, in your mind is actually the scenery or maybe the time you take in that photo. Yeah, maybe I just remember uh, that's the photo I took last month in in, in that restaurant. Yes, maybe with your iPhone or DSLR. Uh, yeah, you, you probably can remember that part, but you certainly don't know if you can put this DSC001 yeah. to search that specific photo. So what QNAP QSearch can do is that search images files without typing any single keyword. Oh, really? Yeah, because we actually index all those EXIF conditions for you. So all you need to do is, again, look at the panel and just check the box we sort, we've been sorting to you. Like in here, um, you will see uh, images or the lens you were, you were using or the aperture you were using. Just check it and the outcome will be so those those uh, metadata in a pic in a picture they are recorded by the camera itself. Yes. And then uh, you don't have to input anything, and the information is already there. Yes. So you can utilizing this uh, metadata as the criteria yes. for your search. Yes, exactly. And there is a second part, which again will be surprising everyone is that we are providing color filter. Color filter. I believe some fans will be pretty familiar with because they might see it on Google. Yeah. And the main idea is that say, we just had Halloween last night. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Michael, what do you think are the main colors with this festival? Pumpkins? Pumpkins, yeah. So might be orange. Yeah. Probably dark because, and so black will be. Yeah, orange. black also. Yeah. So all you need to do is put on black and check on orange and you will see all your photos doing last time. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, and I believe uh, we will we'll certainly have a demo later on the image part, and I know people will be pretty excited about this. And the third part will be the emails. So the emails, well, QNAP have been integrating QMail agent solutions with file stations, so people can back up their emails to, to their NAS, and whenever they want to check it, uh, they just go back to file station. But actually, QSearch can do the search for them, because we've as we're talking about email, it will be tens of thousands of emails. Yeah, that could be a pain because um, sometimes you just want, you just want to search for some specific e some specific email, but you can only remember um, a fraction of the title yes. or some of the details. Yeah. And if the search function is not powerful enough, you still have to scroll over the entire exactly. list. Exactly. And if you were lucky enough, you might remember the email address of the sender. Yeah. But if not, um, <laughs> you don't get lucky every day. Yeah, exactly. So what we can do for email searching here is that first we do full text searching for email content. So let's say it's a Christmas uh, um, warming card. You certainly want to find the 
text Merry Christmas. So you just put in Merry Christmas. And we will try to find if they are including in some of the content for you. And the second, we know you can't remember every single email address of the sender. So we sort it for you and customize the filter on the right side. You just have to check it. Yeah, maybe maybe when you see the address, you will remember something. Yes. But uh, if you see nothing, you will remember nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the third part will be browsing. So uh, as you see the email, you still want to have a glance on what roughly it is. Yeah, so just single click on the, the mail and we have prepared the browser for you as well. And if you want to do further actions on email, like reply, forward the email, there are Cumulo agents links and file station links on the site. So you can just click on and you can just go ahead. Yeah, very, it's very convenient because everything is integrated together. Yes. So you, you, you can do always things in a single interface. You don't have to switch switch between windows, between tabs. Yes. It can be it, it can be done very quickly, save you a lot of time. Yes. That's whole the whole idea. And they are something that we believe people will be very happy to know about QSearch is that we are providing two little extensions on the browser uh, covering Chrome browser and Firefox. So this tiny Q, uh, QSearch helper is actually create a little window on the right side of the browser. So when you are searching content on Google, uh, might be about photos or something, it will simultaneously search for the files in your NAS. And the results will, I say, uh, the Google will of course be in the central and our, the, everything content in your NAS that match the, uh, the keyword will also be in the little window. So lots of little helper or plugin, they will try well, uh, as you search on Google, they will try to gather information as relevant as possible and yes. dis displayed on the same screen. Yeah, but you certainly want to know if there's anything relevant that you already have in your NAS. Yeah, of course. Right. That's the helper. And QSearch actually has its own open API. So which means if you are a developer, you can certainly exploit on it and make your own app based on the API that providing by uh, QNAP and QSearch. So there is a two very excellent um, examples of using these API is our QSearch mobile app, iOS and Android, because they are um, built based on these API. So I really like most people I already know that. Yeah, we say with API, you can uh, command all those services together yes. and integrate uh, the already great features into more into more possibilities. Yes. And use it in many apps and the search for the information you want very quickly. Yes. Without, uh, if with integration, you can do it in the app you design or in the uh, web page you wrote yourself and uh, you don't have to switch again. Yes, exactly. So again, our happy time. Yeah, for sure. For the research. Are you willing to see something about our color filter? All right, cool. Let's go to demo. Okay. So, in case for the, those people who haven't been met with QSearch, QSearch should look like this. Okay, so as we click name on this QSearch panel, it's very uh, intuitive because it, it looks like just a Google search box. Yeah. Click on it. Um, images, of course, because we are using the color filter. Okay, let's say we just go to uh, went hiking last weekend. What would you think are the most color in the hiking photos? Maybe blue. Blue will certainly be included. And or maybe green. green. Yeah. Green for the grass, blue for the sky, right? Yeah. So, okay, let's start with green and take blue later. Green here. Let's see what we get there. That's not... Oh, yes, of course. Flowers and grass that we, we taken last time. And as you said, just blue. Let me uh, let us just try another cool feature here is that actually you can have a little mix on the colors. Really? Yeah. So we just said blue and green will uh, all be consists in the photos we taken last uh, last weekend. So let's put it green and blue here and make it small as possible. And you will see all these photos, blue sky and green grass and the water it was just find what you want with blue and green in the conditions. And that's very good because uh, you can um, 
select multiple criteria and um, just look for certain picture. Maybe um, just say in a pic in the same picture, there's a sky, there's um, there's a forest, and you can find a photo very easily to by assigning all these criteria. Yes. And then not just a single one. Maybe blue is blue, and then green is green. Right? Yeah, you can certainly well, as you said, customize your own. Yeah, conditions. of course. Yeah, and maybe the second part will be the extension. So the extension will be just like this. Okay, we already have some search. Uh, we're sorry about the Chinese content, but we want to show you is here. We actually put in sample in the Google search bar, but you see it's two search are providing its own uh, results on the right side of the monitor. And it shows not just one NAS because we are actually connecting two NAS together. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, so for those heavy, powerful users of QNAS fans that you have multiple NAS in your home, you can certainly be benefited from this feature. And uh, 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 take, take a business uh, application into consideration, maybe um, for different offices of different persons, the different employees, yes. they have their own NAS, but uh, if they, their resources are shared together, then I, I, with uh, this add-on install, yeah. I can search all the NAS to look for all these um, photos or certain documents. Yes. So all these things are shared together. They're yeah. not bound into a certain NAS. Not at all, not at all. That's very cool. Yes. Okay, so these are the extension and the color filter. And we might want to go down on the categorizing part. Sure, yes. of course. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, so categorizing. Oh, I'm so sorry about this. Before we actually go to that part, we are introducing our OCR. Yeah, we just mentioned a little bit about it and we want to give it a more idea. This could be very, very useful for me personally, because as I attended to uh, some kind of electronic exhibition, such as uh, you know, CES or CV or Computex, I would like to go just, you know, see around and check out what the other companies and um, participants are showing in this exhibition. But maybe I would just bring my own phone. And as I see something that'd be very interesting to myself on their backboard, I would just shoot. But I might not complete the reading right away. I want to take it back to my home and just do it after. But while I'm how can I just find what I want if they are all images instead of texture uh, in a text? Yeah, that's a, it, it's, it's a little bit like uh, if you want to categorize categorize things you have to make it categorizable first yes so the ocr converter is to convert all this um inf uh, useful information yes. in a photo yes. or an image into <clears throat> sorry about that okay. into a into a editable text yes. so it can be searched yes. then it can be categorized yes so that's the whole idea and besides search you you, you might want to add it as well because you're taking a photo of the content you see like 80% fine with you, but maybe the other 20% you still want to do your own editing. So along with OCR converter this time, we also provide you the text editor. So as you are converting those uh, content from images to text editable to catch and which can be searchable, which can be editable, we we'll provide you this tiny little tool to edit with uh, with whatever use you want to, to do. Yeah. And actually, I know that sometimes the uh, software recognition of those texts might not be 100% accurate, yeah, right? that's true. So you might want to proofread a little bit after the conversion is done, make sure everything is correct, yeah. then save it. Yeah. So having an editor is very important. Yeah, the war is not that perfect <laughs> as we're now. Yeah, so let's give our fans a little idea on how the Q uh, OCR converter works. All right, sure. Yeah. Go to demo, please. Yes, yes, yes. So our demo here. Oh, show you the icon first. This will be the OCR converter icon. And as you want to use it in QTS 4.34, you first have to install it from App Center. And you might find it has to be installed together with text editor. They are de dependent. Yeah, so just don't be shocked, but <laughs> don't be scared or surprised. Yeah, yeah, they are together. Yeah, but don't worry because you <laughs> will always need these two together. You want to edit it. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's take a look. So it's pretty much follow the design idea of the other uh, QNAT um, QPKGs like um, QFiling. You can do the tags either one time or scheduled, yeah, which means multiple times. Yeah. So to keep it simple, we, we choose a uh, one-time design. So the idea is just to specify what other files you want to convert and specify how would you like to it to be converted. So let's find something for us to convert. Yeah, okay, we got here. So you can see these are um, images with text. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe pick the first three here and you just pick next. Now, in, on this page, while you are creating this OCR task, you want to know um, how would you like to uh, convert it, like uh, including what are the languages uh, included in this um, this piece of image. For now, we are supporting four languages together, including German, simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, and of, of course English. And again, if they are crazy fans, heavy users, you are so eager to um, some of the languages to be available in the future, let us know. Of course. Yes, yeah, there will, uh, of course, be more to come, but we need to hear your voice. Sure. Yes. So uh, for now, um, because the content are all English, so we just speak English here, apply. The output can be uh, select from PDF and TXT or both. Yeah. So let's put it both this time, horizontal or vertical. That is straightforward. And OK, the download folder, I just directed to the same source path. Yeah, so you will see the outcomes in this the same location. Yeah, same place. Yeah. And because they might be so many files at the same time, you don't want to just configure it one by a time. Please use this button, apply it. Everything you set up here will be applied to the following task. Yeah, that's uh, very useful if you want to <coughs> upload uh, operate on this file in batch. Yeah. So you don't have to uh, assign individual settings. Yes. You can do it once and for all. Yes. And just before we go next, you might want to check what exactly are these. So the, here is a little preview as you are mouse over this eye icon and you can double check are these the files you really want to convert? Because uh, processing takes time. You don't want to waste your time yes. processing a wrong file. Yes, exactly. Okay, if everything is right, we just click next. And last check, summary, everything is fine. And you just click apply and it's working. Yeah. And um, normally it really depends on how the, the, the file size and, it, and you will of course, uh, affects the, the time it takes. Okay, so here are the outcomes because we choose both text and PDF as the um, output files or files format. And let's just check how it looks like now. Okay, this is our first file. On the left side uh, is the original image file. You can still see colors and text all together. On the right side is the converted text version. Yeah, so you can see, okay, you can, of course, oh, okay. And here goes the text editor. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So if you find anything in error, you want to change anything, or if you want to add some of your personal notes, yes. this is the right button to click. Yes, and you just edit it and save and everything will be fine. Very good. That's the whole idea. Very simple. It. Very simple, yeah. Just follow everything you've learned from Windows and Mac system, and you will know how to do that. Of course. Okay, yeah, let's just go back to our slides maybe. Okay, so we are done with managing, we're done with searching, and finally we're going to the categorize part. Categorize and we can't miss our old brand queue filing. So the old queue filing idea is, again, there are some thing in the world that if people asking you to do it one time, it might be fine and it asks you to do hundreds of times and you die. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so the traditional, or let's say the classical way of filing a bunch of files is actually drag and drop. I believe everyone can do that. Yeah, and you do it a hundred times a day. Uh, a day. 
Yeah, it's a <laughs> tedious job. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to、uh, run into that situation. So that here comes the queue filing. I think it's pretty simple. You select what other files you want it to be filed, and again, how you want it to be filed. Yeah. So here you see、um, in our slides on the left side, you just select what other sources and select what are the destinations, and we are actually、um, supported. NAS and iSCSI and USB devices as your、uh, source and destinations, and as you done with the selections of source and destination, you want to、um, customize your own、uh, conditions of filing. So here, for picture, you might be、uh, wanted to be sorted by modified date and file with the other condition you want. Music, documents, videos might have other conditions. You just set it. And here are a little、uh, very friendly design of us is that we know,、um, although many people do know what they are doing on filing on setting these conditions, they are still a little bit worried about what are the outcomes. Yeah, because sometimes if you are you are setting the wrong conditions, yeah, or this condition accidentally includes something you don't want to put into this folder, yeah. And that will be might be a disaster, but yeah. So here, our little cute、um, design here is actually can preview the structure.、Um, if you are using this condition, the structure will be like this. And it,、uh, after before you are hundred percent sure, you can always go back and remodify every condition you have. It's very convenient. Yes, it is. So this is the idea of queue filing. Okay, so basically today we have covered everything from manage. To search and to categorize um, um, that's regarding to office workers' daily works, and we're、um, pretty sure these、uh, are solving any kind, every kind of problem. Maybe once at a time, but we will certainly,、um, as we、um, be repeating in this session,、uh, for those heavy workers,、uh, so heavy users, if you do have some kind of idea that you want us to know, please let us know. We will solve the problem as we did at this time. Sure. Thank you, Linus, for bringing us、uh, such an interesting introduction on how to improve our productivity using QNAP solutions.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, as he mentioned, that we are、uh, well, we welcome any suggestion and uh, feature uh, suggestion. Yes. So if you have any ideas, let us know. Yes. Thank you, Linus. Thank you, Michael.、Uh, so this concludes our productivity introduction part, and、uh, we、we'll、have to take a little break here because our next product manager will introduce the multimedia solution we propose this time. So stay with us. Thank you, Linus. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for staying us with us. Now I have our product manager Claire with me. Hi, Claire. Hi, everyone. And、um, actually, um, in the previous um, in the previous part of this presentation, when when the when Whitey is talking about、mm -hmm. uh, new features of QTS four three four, he mentioned that、uh, we have some new multimedia improvements that、uh, we can bring more、um, enjoyable experience to our users.、Mm -hmm. So you're going to tell us about that part, right? Yes. All right. Let's go to our slides. Okay. The first one I want to introduce is about the QV helper, and the QV helper is a QNAP video helper. So you can understand it literally. It's a tool for video. So now I will introduce why we provide the QV helper and how it provide users a better experience when they watching videos. Sure. I believe that everyone has this experience. You go to download station and download the videos, and you can wait. After it finish downloading, you go to video station and want to watch these videos. But、uh, there are shows that that the system doesn't support for the this format. So if your NAS is an ARM based model,、uh, the system doesn't. It cannot do the online transcode, so in、uh, so it will the files will be download to your computer, and then you need to use other player to open the files.
Yeah, it's very frustrating because uh, yes. if we download a video, we want to watch it right now. Yes. But uh, exactly. like, if, uh, when the screen shows the format is not supported, and you have to look for some other programs to yes. open the video, that will take time, and uh, it's a very um, it's a bummer actually. Yes, and it's not very convenient. Yeah. So here we comes the QB helper. And the QV Helper is a tool that can help users to stream their medias, uh, media files from QNibNAS to the VLC player. And all the format that VLC player supported, we also can support it. And if you want to use the QV Helper, you, there are some basic requirements that you need to, the video station need to be 5.1.3 or the later versions. And the photo station need to be 5.6.0 or later versions. And the file station need to be QTS 4.3.4. So this is a new feature. Uh, yes. So we have, uh, we, we sound QTS 4.3.4. Yes. All right. And now I will introduce how to uh, download QV Helper and how to use it from sure. the beginning to the end. Of course. Okay, when you enter in the QTS, you, the first step you need to go to App Center and to check if your video station's version is uh, the latest. And if not, you need to update it. Okay. And that we can see that our video station is 5.2.0. Mm -hmm. And then we go to video station. If I want to play this video and first I show the, this information, you can see that there is a video codec and the audio codec is DTS and the file is MKV. Before, because uh, my NAS is the on base model, so if the format doesn't support it, you click it, uh, open with browser, it will, the files will be downloaded. Yeah, anyway, it will be downloaded. Yes. So now I choose to play it with VLC player and there will show the message that will guide you to download, inst uh, to install the QV helper. And when you click download, you can, uh, you will go to the, this web page, this our QNAP web page, and you can choose, you can according to your operating system to download. For uh, such as the uh, Windows or Mac, mm -hmm. and you need to be noticed that uh, the Mac version need to be ten point ten. Okay. Yes, and now let's waiting for okay. it download, and as here you can see that there the UI will show the message. Okay, so we have to wait until the download is complete, then run the installer. Yes. <laughs> so. This also solves the, uh, in addition to solving the problem that uh, ARM based NAS doesn't support transcoding, yes. this also uh, solves the, um, the unsupported file format problems, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, there are some, um, and the, some of the uh, file format problems because that uh, there are certain copyright issues, right? Mm -hmm. About the uh, codec. Yes. So for some reasons, we cannot put it in our, into our software. <laughs> so we have to leverage the third party solution. Yes. Also the, the program made by others, but we integrate it with our software. Mm. That's right. Let's wait a little bit more. That's waiting. And after it is finished downloading, you can go to the desktop and use and search the text manager and you will show. After it's download, downloaded and you will show the QB helper on here. Okay. Yes. And we also see the tiny little robot over layer. Yes. Uh, I remember last time you introduced this with us, right? Yes. Right, it's uh, it's Q boost, oh. <laughs> right? Yes, Q boost. And we'll we'll be talking about that a little bit later, later right? Yes. All right, he's waving with us. 
。ただし。そう、ああいう、excited about this、uh, new release of QTS、also for。そう、of course。Alright。A lot of new features。Wow. It really takes a lot of time. Why? I don't understand. People、I'm、should be having dinner、it. right now. <laughs> They never should be less slow. Okay. Why so late? I don't know. <laughs> Let's just wait a little bit more. This is live demo. <laughs> yeah, this is live demo. We are really downloading the file because we want to show. The whole process, because、um, if we just go to the utility page and download, then we cannot show the entire process. And、uh, we want we want our users know that to know that、uh, we have a completely complete and friendly design、mm -hmm. to guide you through this in,、uh, installation process. Yes. Okay, it's just maybe、One、maybe <laughs> maybe ten percent left. That's okay. So. With all, we we really spent a lot of time in, in on improving the whole user interface、uh, from from the previous、um, point that、uh, our product manager mentioned.、Uh, we are continuously improving our product,、mm -hmm. make it more user friendly, and you don't need、mm -hmm. to you don't need a very advanced knowledge to use all these latest features.、Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we have been working on very hard. <laughs> Including、uh, snapshots, and、uh, you can manage snapshots in file manager and for the QB helper. QB helper, yes. Well, we are doing, we are doing, trying to do our best to bring on、uh, you know, as easy as possible, as smooth as possible,、mm -hmm. those experience to our users. Yes. It's almost done. Yay. Yeah. All right. And click next. Install, and it will be more quickly. Yeah, it still takes a little bit time, <laughs> but it's yeah, faster.、Best. Go, go, go! All right, right now、finish. it's done. And here, no, it will, it will automatically detect、yeah. the install from black and white, and go to the colorful. Yeah. And then you can click continue, and it will guide you to install the VLC player. <laughs> and still, you need to download it. It's、but、more quickly. <laughs> somehow it's just faster. I don't understand, but it's, it's faster. It's good. We don't have to wait.、Yes. Yeah, it's done. Wait a second. Okay.、Mm -hmm. Next, next, next. Install. Finish. And then let's go to our video station. You、They、can see. It's still automatically detected.、Yes. And then we can start using USC Player. And let let's test it again. Let's play it with VLC player, and it will show it will stream to the VLC player. It's quite convenient. That's very good because um,、uh, the installation might take a little bit time, but、uh, once it's installed,、uh, the whole operation is very smooth.、Mm -hmm. Just with simple click, and everything is done, and it solves a lot of problems. So you can. Enjoy your videos、um, in a in a better way. Yes, and also you can go to the setting and the miscellaneous and to choose if you want to always play with VLC player. So what's the difference with the the check box? If if it's checked, why why is this effect? Ah,、uh, if you <coughs> check, you just need to play it, and you will. So the. Default behavior will be changed to play by VLC always.、Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very convenient. Yes, and that's a part. That's about the QB helper. All right. <clears throat> so basically, it solves a lot of problems that、um, uh, uh, about about the、um, 
non uh, transcoding mm -hmm. and the format issue and so we can enjoy these videos yeah. all right very good so now we are going to talk about a little robot right yes the q boost so when we pre we in the previous episode we already talked about q boost but uh, we we are still going to discuss a little bit more today mm -hmm because um, it's very important to how to manage our, our resources. Mm -hmm. In this release, in this update, we, re we are really putting a lot of new features into the ARM-based NAS. Yes. So <clears throat> this become a very important issue because um, with a lot of things, the system may be slower and slower. Mm -hmm. So how does QBoost help us solve this problem? Yes, I will introduce now. Uh, I believe that everyone has doing this have this experience you download and delete uh, many applications in your cell phone. As you repeatedly doing this action, it may cause many uh, junk files in your cell phone. And when you use these applications, uh, you will have cache memory. So when your cell phone is full of cache memory, junk files, and many applications, the memory may be occupied. So when you use for a while, you may think that your cell phone lags very often. And this problem not only happens in cell phone, but also in computer or even NAS. And if your NAS model is about is a on base model, uh, their memory capacity is not as better as x86 model so when there are too many applications that occupy the memory the system may use the swap memory so it will cause the NAS lake so the swap memory means that the some files in memory will have to be written into hard disks hard disk, to yeah. make more space in mm -hmm. the range so the yeah. program can run and the lowest data exchange in yeah. between the RAM and the hard disk could take some more time yes it take time so in order to help users to uh, recycle the, the resource and to solve the lake problem and to enhance the system more efficiently. So we, here comes the QBoost. And QBoost including three functions. That the first one is optimize and the clear and the application scheduling. And I will introduce them separately. All right. The first one is the uh, optimize. The optimize means that it will clean the cache memory and the swap memory in system. And when you click the optimize, you will see that there is a rocket lift up to the sky. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yes. And the next one is about the clear. It will delete the unnecessary system files such as uh, the damaged files in mm. system. And then you can also it will also clean the recycle bin in the desktop. But here we we don't uh, the default is not click the is not click the recycle bin. So if you also want to clean it, you need to click it. Okay. And the uh, and if mm -hmm. there are too many applications that really um take um that really not uh, if there are really um um many applications and if you use the optimize but you cannot really catch memory so what can you do so it's you mean still there are a lot of programs that uh, that simply cleaning the memory is not mm -hmm. enough right yes so what can we do about it so we can use the the, the application scheduling it means that you can set schedule to applications uh, if you want to want it to be enabled or you want to it to be disabled so you can by application scheduling you mean um, you can set that uh, certain program only run at certain times yes so if you uh, say you have an example here right yes so if you only use not station during working hours mm -hmm. so then you can disable it uh, during uh, night time yes so you can do more more entertainment inter applications so mm -hmm. so it's basic like um just disabling something you don't want to use based on time mm -hmm. so you can make up more memories and resources for the thing that really matters yes so now i will demo it how to use uh, All right. application scheduling cool let's go to demo 
And I hear uh, this is our QTS. And in the past, we all, we will use the resource monitor to see the status of our NAS, such as the memory usage or the process. And in the process, you can see that all the applications inside, and you can see the status and the memory. Okay. But uh, there may need some technical background people. They can do the com they can set a command line to manage these applications. But now we provide the QBoost, and you can use QBoost to manage your applications. And here you can see there is a robot, and you can click it, and you will see that there are the three functions that I mentioned before. And the first one is the optimize. When I click it, you can well, see the rocket. The rocket. Oh. And there is a summary okay. you can see. And the next one is about the clear. And you can click more to see if you want to clean the recycle bin files. Okay. And I here I click it. So you will these files will be permanently deleted. Okay, there's the warning, so think twice before you go check the box. And I click here and there's a car racing. Ooh, yeah. fancy. So it, so with all these cute animations, we try to make this um, more approachable, not more and, fun. Yeah, more funny yes. in a way. And click OK. And the next part is about the application scheduling. You can click more to see all the applications. And you can also click the title to do sorting. For example, I want to see the memory. And here you can see from the large to the lead. OK. Um, here also shows the status that these are always enabled or always disabled. And you can according to memory and the status to do the action, such as say schedule or stop or remove it. And uh, here you can see that there's, there are some applications that they cannot be removed because they are the system service. Okay. So now let's say scheduled for no station. You can click this one and then click enable schedule. And uh, here you can see that the vertical is about the day and the horiz horizon is about the time. And I want to disable no station on night. Maybe um, four and on Sunday and Saturday. You act you accidentally disable it on Monday morning. So you might want to restore that. And you just need to click enable and to it's still very simple. Yes. You just drag your cursor mm -hmm. and then it's back. And you click apply. It works. It still. Uh, it work. It works. And next, you can. I want to disable Q search. I can click and also enable schedule. And I want to disable it from now. Uh, for now, is about this one, or maybe Friday, Saturday. You, you can just um determine okay. deper, determine very easily by yourself and mm -hmm. just drag on the on the chart. Yes. And also click apply. So actually, there is a message popping out earlier says that uh, notification has been disabled. Yes. And it's saying it's stopping queue search, so the scheduling is working. Yeah. And you can go to the, you can click the overview to see these two scheduled applications. And in this time slot, it will show that these scheduled applications is enabled or not. For example, uh, this number one means that in this time that queue search is is enabled. And this two means that in this time, the Monday and eight o'clock, 
uh, queue search and node station are all enabled, and zero means that they are all disabled. So you, let, uh, on this window, it will only show programs, apps that has a schedule, right? So yes. if no schedule, there will be no, no show here. Yes. And you can easily see the all these uh, scheduled applications. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like uh, we can see that the free memory becomes more. Yeah, because we disable Q search. <laughs> yeah. It takes, yes. uh, for the convenience, it takes some memories. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to our slides. So quickly recap us on uh, the functions of Qboost, Qboost. right? Yes. Uh, there are three solutions of Qboost. The first one is optimized. It will release the catch memory and the swap memory, and then increase the operating speed. And the next one is uh, clear. You will clean up the junk files and then recycle the storage space. And the next one is about the application scheduling. It will allocate the system resource efficiently. So with all these three features, we can more efficiently uh, manage those resources, uh, distribute them between apps. Mm -hmm. So um, the app will be will be running more smoothly, okay. and those researches mm -hmm. uh, can be effectively um, utilized. Very cool. So thank you, Claire, for bringing us um, mm -hmm. only some resource management utilities and the multimedia solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have to pause here again to bring another product manager, which you might already be very familiar is Jason. He will be uh, doing <laughs> our ending and uh, giving us a quick recap about what kind of models that supports the QTS update and some IoT application we are very excited to introduce to you. So stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, here I have our regular guest of the show, Jason, with me. Hi, hi, Michael. Hi, everyone. And uh, we're going to talk about a little bit uh, new features that are going to add to our on base muscle. So mm -hmm. that's um, the IoT part of uh, our software solutions. And previously, these are all only available in the X86 models, right? Uh, yes, our QRT3 Lite, uh, it, it is a lead, uh, great little software from QNAP that uh, helps maker and uh, system integrators to easily connect IoT devices and uh, build an IoT environment. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, previously, it was only available for the uh, X86 uh, NAS models, which is based on Intel and AMD processors. But uh, with the latest uh, upcoming QTS 4.3.4, we also made it, make it possible for the ARM-based models with uh, two gigabyte RAM or more. All right, very, mm -hmm. very good. So well, what can IoT do? Because some of our um, entry-level users mm -hmm. may not know a lot about IoT. So what can IoT do? What, can they, what kind of convenience can it bring? Yeah, so let me uh, start with a little bit introduction on the uh, QLT3 Lite. So to set it up and to get started, it is very easy. So you just go to a uh, QNAP QTS uh, desktop system, and then you go to our app center, and then search for a uh, 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 container station. You need to install two two uh, packages. First one is a container station, and second second one is a QLT3 Lite. After that, and then you just follow three different uh, stages to set up your IoT stuff. So let's take a look at the first stage. The stage one is data collection. So basically with IoT world, you know, there are so many IoT uh, sensors for temperature, for uh, light, and also for humidity and more. So basically you, are, you will need to connect the sensors with those uh, development boards for data collection and also the devices, IoT devices. Once that is co uh, connected, then you connect to the QLT3 Lite. We will start uh, the QLT3 Lite software will start to collect the data. So now you will go move on to stage two, which is uh, the NAS provide storage for the data, right? Collected by the IoT devices, and then uh, you will set up the different uh, rules engine, and then or uh, different thresholds. So for example, uh, when you open the door, then the, it will trigger the light sensor, the light sensor and then turn on the, the light, the move motion sensor and the light sensor turn on the light, okay? This is one of the uh, rules engine you can set for uh, action. And then also you can uh, also define uh, when a certain temperature, for example, when it reaches 35 degrees, and then you will start to uh, uh, to spray, spray the water on your farm, okay? So that's one of the IoT applications. 
And uh, now, when, once you have these overall set, uh, settings uh, done in the QRD Suite Lite, then we also provide a dashboard for you to uh, visualize and analyze the data. Okay, so uh, we basically we have uh, some pretty uh, pre-made uh, data and then methods to help you easily get into the IoT world with Q Q uh, QIoT Suite Lite. And furthermore, uh, you can combine with a hybrid cloud because uh, the one I talk about it, when you host the on us, it's for private cloud, so you have uh, your own privacy and uh, data protection. And also, you can also uh, configure it as a hybrid cloud, so the data can further be sent to somebody online. Uh, analytic tools such as uh, what I show here you see on the screen, which is uh, Amazon Web Services and uh, Microsoft Power BI to help you further with their powerful analyzing tools. You can further uh, have some artificial intelligence to do with your data. And you can even also with uh, the upcoming APIs from QNAP, you can also develop your own software. For example, your mobile devices, you can inst uh, inst constantly check your uh, sensor information and data to do further actions. So uh, as shown on this slide, it's like mm -hmm. a cycle, right? You collect data with low or less sensors and mm -hmm. devices, yeah. and with the uh, with a uh, rules engine and those threshold setting, you try to convert them into uh, useful information. Mm -hmm. And uh, the data visualization part is to present this information, mm -hmm. so you can uh, utilize the all this uh, data in a very efficient way to help you do a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And now, so uh, let this, this one, uh, the next slide shows you a, a brief uh, comparison difference between when you set up the QLD Suite Lite on the ARM-based NAS, QNAP NAS, and uh, on the Intel AMD-based QNAP NAS. So let's take a look on the left-hand side for the ARM-based NAS. Basically, uh, traditionally, the, your cost to start this IoT project may be high because uh, uh, the, the, the server with more powerful processor may cost more, okay? But now with QTS 4.3.4, we made it even more affordable. You can just uh, purchase the entry level Q11 NAS that has a minimum two gigabyte of memory, okay, two gigabyte okay. or more. And then uh, you can quickly set up the QLD Suite Lite on the Q11 NAS and then start to get into a Q IoT world. And then also uh, traditionally uh, people use uh, cloud-based computing. So which means all the data are sent into cloud for uh, analysis. Okay, but that that will require a more powerful uh, process for your server, and also may cost has some uh, uh, money in the yeah, traffic. Yeah, more. Yeah, and the hosting. But with uh, this ARM based digital service such as QNAP TS two two thirty one P two and uh, TS four thirty one P two, this supports QRD Suite Lite, so you can utilize and deploy them as in a far computing concept, which means. You can because these are so affordable. You can deploy these NAS in different, for example, in your in your farms, in different houses and offices to help your to help you to collect the different uh, various IoT devices and then generate the data and then for further analysis and applications. Okay, but um, if you are more like in the IT field or geek who are very good at uh, programming, okay, <laughs> you be sure to uh, look at our uh, QNAP x86 based NAS. And for example, because uh, with these powerful processors, okay, and uh, QNAP QTS, you we, it allows not only just give you great storage solution, but also provides a very good uh, multimedia features and uh, business uh, backup solutions. Also, virtualization such as uh, you can run virtual machines like Windows virtual machines on the NAS. And furthermore, uh, because these CPUs are more powerful and also much more memory available, you can also start it with your with our QLT containers. So basically, what it is that you can uh, install various uh, IoT modules, okay, and then write your own programs to connect, interact with each other. So unlike QRT Suite Lite, which works with uh, several predefined uh, develop developing boards from Raspberry Pi, from Arduino, and then from uh, some MTK and the Intel development boards, if you have a good uh, program skill, feel free to try the QRT containers and then make your own IoT project more powerful. So all those uh, Intel and AMD based models, they are powerful, but uh, with the introduction of QIoT Suite Lite to the mm -hmm. ARM based model, yes. we are actually lowering the entry barrier for those um, uh, beginners or home users or uh, amateur users to to get into the world of IoT. Uh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. So 
with, with this um with these new added features to the arm based nado man i believe a lot of our users are pretty excited about, about this upcoming update mm -hmm. and they want to know what kind of hardware products of qnet supports this uh, new update so can you quickly um introduce us what 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 kind of product we have let's suppose a qts434 yeah so for sure definitely the the new models we easily see that you won't miss it you know qts 4.3.4 for these new models so start let's look at the top left uh, the the most powerful one which is the ts x77 series it comes in uh, uh six bay eight bay and 12 bay and then with a very powerful ryzen six and eight core processors so because with so many cores and so many threads you know threads are doubled up to 16 threads so it's very good for you to run virtual machines and all, all other various uh, powerful computing uh, stuff. And then in the middle one, the upcoming TBS X73X series, which is based on the AMD APU quad-core processor and uh, with, a, uh, inter with a 1 10 gigabit base, 10 G base T port. So with that, uh, you can easily deploy that in your high-speed uh, business environment. Okay. And then on the bottom left, this is a TS453 BT3, which provide, provides you the Thunderbolt 3, not just one, give you two Thunderbolt 3 ports, plus uh, one 10 GB base T ports. Also, it has a two, built in two of the M.2 SATA SSD slots, so you can use it with the QNET Q tier and also to uh, increase your 10 GB performance. That sounds very powerful for some of power users. Yeah, and it is also our most affordable Thunderbolt solution up to date. You know, previously you may, it may cause you maybe about two two thousand us dollars but this one is very affordable uh -huh. sure and then on the top right you we start to get into the arm based processors which is also powerful because it's a four core four core processor and also uh, 1.7 gigahertz so uh you have a one one u rec mount four bay ts431 xeu so it gives you one integrate 10 gb sab plus port and then the brother model, which is the desktop model, TS431X2, also gives you one integrated 10 gigabit based uh, SA Plus port. They all come with a powerful four core processor. Okay. And actually, the A431X EU is a short depth model, right? Yeah, it's only about 12 inch de uh, deep. So you can easily uh, integrate into many different racks and then it gives you also more space for the cabling. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, uh, T the bottom one is the TS four thirty one P two and TS three two three one P two, which is the one the, the one product line recommend for running your the QLT three light because uh, not only it gives you a uh, four core processing power but also uh, it has a one solid memory slot for DDR three memory and you can easily upgrade it to maximum eight gigabyte. It comes with a one gigabyte and, and the four gigabyte uh, option, but you can easily in, uh, replace it and upgrade it to a gigabyte. So let add more flexibility. Yes, yeah, and also very affordable to get started. So these are all new models for this season, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So how about our loyal users who already bought a QNET NAS? Yeah, yeah, if you have a bought a QNET NAS, our old customers, or if you are considering other current uh, setting models, so we want to maximize your own investment, okay? So we also make QTS 4.3.4 available on more models not just those new upcoming models okay so on the top left Thunderbolt NAS series starting from the very first one TBS uh, A71T and then all, all, all the way up to a new one so all the QNAMs Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 3 NAS models can support the QTS 4.3.4 and then on the top right there's the recommend models uh, starting from the uh, enterprise level TDS 1680 uh, 489U all the way down to the 431U, the ARM dual-core processor. All these models can support the upcoming uh, QTS 4.3.4, okay? And then on the button, the Tower series, more, even more models, okay? Starting from the 16 base Super NAS, uh, down to the 53, 70, and then 31 series. All these models listed here will get an upgrade later. So mm -hmm. we are bringing so many new features and new improvement to not only our new models, but also for existing models. So uh, our users can enjoy those new features without purchasing any new hardware. Yeah, and the most important thing is that we make the snapshot available for the ARM models with one gigabyte memory. Well, that's very yeah. important because we provide more, provide more protection to our users mm -hmm. and uh, try to lower those uh, restrictions and requirements so more people can enjoy them. Um, 
the secure secure protection. Mm, yes, and for a list of complete uh, model numbers, and please uh, visit this website to learn more about it. All right. Thank you, Jason, for giving us a quick but uh, very useful uh, presentation about mm -hmm. what kind of models are supported with this new QTS mm -hmm. update yeah. and giving us a fun introduction about the QIOT suite mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. So to sum up with all this uh, presentation today given by our Vice President in Research and Development, YT, and uh, Tony and Linus and uh, Claire and you, Jason, we, mm -hmm. we, we found that uh, we can we can definitely say that uh, we invest a lot of time and effort and listen to customer feedback and to pro try to provide with some um, best software and the most usable function and the most easy uh, user interface to our customer. Mm -hmm. I can say that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh. I hope you guys will all enjoy the upcoming QDS 4.3.4 uh, and then give us feedback. Yeah. All right, feedback are very important. <laughs> yes. So so if you have any comments, you, ex you experience uh, any um, problems, um, you, you be sure to let us know. We will be happy to listen to you, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. All right, right, sure. So thank you for watching today. Today's episode took a, a little bit longer than usual, but that's because we, we are trying to present all these new features mm -hmm. in this update in a more complete scope. So I hope you enjoy this episode and found all this uh, new feature and mm -hmm. this new update very useful. So um, at next week, we will be having more introduction, but uh, we'll st please stay tuned and we will let you know what's coming up next. So thank you, Jason, again. Okay, you're welcome. All right, that's okay. all for today. Thank you for watching. Bye -bye. Okay, bye-bye.